Hey everybody, Shane here with Junk Music, and today I'm going to show you how I finished this guitar body with some Birchwood Casey True Oil. Let me show you what I learned along the way. So the first thing that we've got to do is the surface prep. Uh, I started with an 80 grit sandpaper, and then I worked down to 120 and then 240 grit. I hand sanded the edges since I don't yet have a spindle sander, but I used a drywall sander for the flat front and back. Uh, the bottle of True Oil suggests working down to about a 220 grit, though more research on their site says that if you're working with a new project, you should probably go to a finer grit sandpaper, anywhere from 400 up to 600. Uh, since I'm working with reclaimed wood here and I didn't really want a super fine level of finish, I stuck with the 240. Uh, I did, however, uh, stop at the end with the power sanding. I did a final sanding at 240 uh, entirely with the grain so that I could work to hide any remaining visible scratches from the sanding and get out any swirls left by the power sander. Uh, it's important to note that the true oil is going to emphasize your grain, but it's also going to emphasize any of those scratches and imperfections. So make sure you give your project a visual inspection for any of those swirls left from the sanding before you proceed to applying the finish. And speaking of grain and sanding scratches, let me jump in real quick to mention that I've seen in a few places that the true oil itself can be used as a grain filling material. Uh, and all that you really have to do is sand up to 600 grit and then wet sand at 600 with the true oil as the wet component. Uh, and you're going to create a slurry with the sawdust and the oil that washes into the grain there. And then you'll wipe away cross grain to keep yourself from removing that extra material. Uh, I have not tried this yet, but for now, just know that it can be done. All right. After sanding, I used a wet rag to wipe down the body. Uh, in this case, I happen to have some Miss Myers on hand, but usually I just use plain white vinegar for this step. Uh, be careful not to get the piece too wet because you'll make the grain rise again. It really, you're just looking to make the rag tacky enough to pick up the sanding dust that's been left on your workpiece. Uh, after this was done, I stored the body in my drying rack so that the dust left in the air wouldn't settle on it again. And then after cleaning up my work area, I left everything alone until the next day to let all that dust settle out of the air and avoid having it drift into my finish. Now the next step is to stain the wood. The first thing that you're going to see here is me reading the can of pre-stained wood conditioner and realizing that the can that I bought was not compatible with the stains that I chose to use for this project. So I wound up having to go without that for this uh, step in the process. But, you know, a little bit of extra care, a little bit of extra prep work, and I managed to avoid most of the problems that that would give me. Uh, and I was not aiming to try to make this wood look too drastically different. I'm not trying to lie to anybody about what species of wood it is. I'm not trying to make anyone think it's anything other than reclaimed Douglas fir. But I did want to knock down the brightness a little bit and try to get a bit more of an aged or amber look uh, like a classic instrument would have. I used Varathane Ipswich Pine just to darken it down from this bright white, like newly milled wood look that I started with. And... Uh, I didn't really know how this was going to turn out without the wood conditioner, but I did the first coat, let it dry, and then I really only had a couple of small spots that didn't take the stain completely, a couple pieces that I missed. So I went through with a second application of the stain, and I managed to blend all those areas in without much of a problem. Uh, after that, I left the body in my new drying rack again uh, before attempting to begin the finishing process the next day. Speaking of the drying rack, I actually made this from one of those cheap plastic armoires that you can buy at the big box stores, and I just attached a vent fan to it that acts to draw the air up through the cabinet and out of the building. Uh, this ended up working out really well for me as it not only safely vents the finishing fumes out of my shop and to the outside, but it also creates a fair amount of airflow around the work pieces. Uh, that I have in there and it helps to aid with the drying while also keeping any of the shop dust and everything from getting to it. Uh, and the whole thing cost me like a hundred bucks to build. It's totally worth it. And now we're getting to the actual finishing process. Uh, I used a scrap of clean cotton fabric wrapped around a paper towel to create an applicator for the oil. Uh, if you're familiar with French polishing at all, you've seen this before. The paper towel adds bulk for ease of handling and can also kind of act as a reservoir that'll help hold the oil 
without dumping it all out at once. Uh, and I cut these cotton squares from an old hoodie that I had that I was going to throw away. Gave me a big pile of free cotton rags to use on these kinds of projects. Uh, from here, it's a matter of applying thin coats, applying ample time to dry between each coat. The directions on the True Oil bottle say to allow two hours of drying time between each coat. But I will admit that I only waited one hour between the first few coats. As since I was storing it in that drying cabinet, it was actually helping to dry it within an hour though i did have to extend the time between later coats uh to where i was waiting four or five hours and even overnight on a couple of the final coats later in the process now as i'd mentioned earlier we only want to build up thin layers uh because not only are they going to dry quicker they're also going to run less you're going to get less swirls and imperfections building up on a uh, the thin coats now, I've seen in my research that this finish, like most rubbed-on finishes, can build up pretty quickly. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that rub it on in circles, but then you have swirls to have to sand out later. So what I did here was I rubbed it on with the grain so that hopefully any buildup, any runs, any sort of uh, visible imperfections like that would be hidden in the pattern of the grain. And not only would I be able to sand them out, but I'd also be able to blend them in a little bit better. Now the bottle of oil itself and many other tutorials that I had seen say that you only need to apply to three to five layers of this finish. Uh, but in order to build up a really high gloss finish, you're gonna need more than that. I ended up applying nine coats of the true oil to this workpiece before beginning finish sanding and then three more at the end. Uh, on coat three, I realized that I should probably use some duct tape and clean off any of the lint from the cotton cloth I was using in order to avoid having that transfer into the finish. On coat four, I saw that the finish hadn't dried as thoroughly as previous coats in the same amount of time. And this is when I started extending the drying time between coats. And then on coat seven, I realized that I could use a hair tie to hold the applicator bundle together. And that added comfort and I didn't have to fight the tool I was using to stay together as I was working on it. Uh, and then finally on coat eight, I began to feel like I was nearing completion. Now, you know, none of the articles that I read or videos I watched really mentioned what to look for uh, as you finish the process. And it seems obvious now looking back on it, but I didn't know when I was putting on those early coats, every time I finished a coat, I was thinking, is it done yet? Is that enough? I can't tell. Uh, but once I got to coat eight here, I really felt the difference. And uh, you know, the difference was that it went from feeling like I was dragging, you know, a, a damp rag across wood fibers to feeling like I was rubbing oil across a glossy finish. You know, when you get to that point where you can feel that difference, uh, you know you're in the home stretch. The next step is to sand the body using a synthetic double O steel wool. I'm using double O steel wool as it's the recommended product for the sanding process according to uh, the true oil itself. And I chose synthetic steel wool specifically so it wouldn't shed as many fibers that could get caught in the final coats of finish. Now, of course, we don't want to sand off all of the finish that we've built up. We're really just trying to even out the finish, get rid of those runs, those imperfections and everything. We're only going to sand lightly and try to knock it all down to a uniform matte finish that's going to help us uh, see that we've gotten in every spot and work as a in visual indicator for that. Uh, after doing that, I wiped down the body with a wet rag again, as I had done with the initial prep sanding, to get as much dust as possible off of the workpiece before moving on to the last few steps. From here, it's just a matter of building up a few final coats of the oil finish. And here is where I started to have some issues uh, in this particular project, though I'll mention most of those are because of my process, not because of the finished product I'm using. These last few coats gave me a wonderfully glossy finish, but I also had more fibers and more particulates from the air or the rag or from whatever that wound up in the last couple layers. Uh, I had a little bit of uh, kind of cracking in a couple of areas that I think was because I applied these last couple layers too quickly in succession behind each other. Uh, in, the few, in the future, I'll have to take a few extra steps to avoid this. Uh, first of all, I'll either round the edges of the cavity routing so that the sharp edges of those cuts don't pull apart the fabric of my applicator or I'll route those cavities after doing the finishing process. I think I'd be able to do that with this particular finish. Uh, and second, I'll have to work to be a little bit more patient 
in ensuring that all the dust is settled and all of my work area is clean and the previous layer is dry before putting on the next layer. Uh, I think that's really 90% of the problem that I faced here. Now at this point, I've applied nine coats of finish prior to sanding and three more coats after that. And I've achieved this great glossy finish, uh, though I've made the mistake of not being patient enough in the last few layers to completely avoid any imperfections. Uh, from here, you could buff it with a polishing compound, use a wax product to really finish it off, anything like that. Uh, but since this particular project uses reclaimed wood and is meant to be a little bit more rustic looking, I skipped that step entirely and I ran with it just as is. Hope I've been able to help you out a little bit, give you a few pointers, show you the possibilities of the Birchwood Casey True Oil. Uh, if you like what you see here, feel free to take a look at the previous videos. The last one that I did was the shaping of this scrap wood slab into this body. I'm going to leave a card for that video right over here, and I hope we'll see you around.